Hey everybody, this is Anne. Once you get the hang of throwing basic cylinders and bowls on the wheel, where do you go from there? In this video, I'll show you three ways to alter those basic forms to create much more dynamic pieces that are surprisingly easy to achieve. First, I'll alter a simple round bowl to make it a football shape. I started by throwing a short squatty bowl, and then I let it dry to a soft leather hard. I flipped it over, centered it, then trimmed and rounded out a nice foot. If you'd like to see more about trimming a bowl, check out the video link above. I cut a template out of paper that was a half inch wide and long enough to stretch over the foot and extend about a half inch along the curve of the bowl. I placed it down along the very center of the bowl like this. I traced the outer edge of the template with my needle tool, then cut the section out. I scored the inner area along the opening, then gently pushed the clay inward until it came together. Note that the rim will bend to an oval shape. I kept an eye on it to make sure that part of the bowl wouldn't crack. If I see that the clay is a bit too dry, I know I can add a little water to soften it up. I made sure to work the seam together along the center of the bowl with my fingers. I then used a rib to smooth it out. I turned the bowl back over and worked in little coils along the seam to make sure it's secure and wouldn't pull apart. Finally, I used a needle tool to cut V-shapes in the foot for even more interest. This breaks up the foot, accentuates the narrowness of the form, and actually points your eye towards the alteration points of the bowl. I love the lines created by the seam when you view it from the side. Now here's the glazed piece. Jim positioned auto detailing tape in a pattern across the bowl, then glazed it with Amico Wasabi. Here you can see the inside and the dynamic lines of the bottom of the bowl. Next I'll show you how I altered a cylinder shape. With this particular vase, I started with a pound and a half of clay. I centered it, then pulled up the walls. I cinched in the top to create the flange. I 
I used a red rib to smooth out the clay inside and out. I softened the edges of the rim with my fingers. I noticed that the vase was a bit skinnier than I wanted, so I used a long spatula to push out the body of the cylinder and create this nice rounded shape. I ribbed it one more time along the outside to get it smooth. Then I trimmed off the bottom for a nice foot. If you want to see more about throwing taller pieces like this, check out the video link above. I set this aside to dry to a soft leather hard. Now here's a vase I threw previously that's now a bit drier than I wanted, but I can still work with it. I marked off the top of the rim with marks directly north and south from each other. Then I marked two marks just northwest and northeast from the other two marks as shown. Starting just to the left of the south mark, I drew a curved line down until I got to the northwest mark. Then back up about a half inch from the north mark, back down to the southwest mark, then return to the right of the south mark. I marked a dot under the downward points. I created an oval template and lined it up on those dots and traced it out. I did the same thing on the other side. Since I let this vase dry a little longer than I should have, I used a wet brush to soften the rim before I made the cuts to avoid chipping or even breaking along the rim. Now I was able to cut the top of the vase along those lines that I made. With wet fingers, I softened the hard edges that I just cut. I thought it'd be a nice touch to extend the top part of the rim outward to create a nice line. To echo the higher extended edge, I did the same thing to the lower back part of the rim. I then cut out the oval shapes and softened the edges like I did along the rim. That's nice, but the top edge looks disconnected from the cutouts. To correct this, I thought I could add illusion lines which would visually connect the two areas. I penciled in lines curving down from the top edge to the top edge of the oval cutout. I then used a diamond core carving tool at an angle to carve along the outer edge of the mark and create dimension and give perspective that one section is folded over the other. Yeah, that's much better. And look, if you hold it straight towards you, you get a dolphin face. <laughs> and here it is all glazed. We used automotive detailing tape for the lines around the bottom, then glazed it with Amico Sky and fired it to cone five. Here's another one I made where I used the smooth surface as a canvas to paint with underglazes. The altered forms provide lots of possibilities for various decorative surfaces. Finally, I experimented with altering a closed form. I begin by centering the clay, then I pulled it out wider than I normally would. 
I then pulled up the walls until I got it to the height that I wanted. Then I cinched in the top part to close it off. If you want to see more on how to throw closed forms, see the video link above. Once the air was trapped in the form, I used a rib to shape the form the way I wanted. I put it aside until it dried to a soft leather hard. I then drew a line starting from behind the top point of the piece, curving down along the edge, and meeting back up to the starting point like so. I then cut out the top part of the form with a needle tool and removed the section. <laughs> you remember these? With wet fingers, I softened and cleaned up the cut edges of both parts of the form. I then fit the top part of the form over the opening so it was offset. I used a pencil to mark at the bottom where they overlap. I took the top form off of the opening and set it aside. I then cut along the pencil mark. I replaced the top part of the form and marked it where I wanted an opening. I created a rainbow shaped template, traced along the top of it, and cut it out. I squeezed the form so the slit would open up. The clay was a bit stiff, so with a wet finger, I worked the clay until it softened and it opened up for me. Next, I scored around the outer edges, both on the outside of the form's top and on the inside of the form's bottom section. Holding the top section by the inside of its new opening, I positioned it just to the inside of the bottom section like this. I repositioned it until it was straight. I then used my fingers to begin connecting the two around the outside. I then used my thumb to connect the top edges together like this. I couldn't reach the bottom edges with my fingers, so I used the long handle of a brush to connect that section. I then wet the brush and ran it along the outside of the seam. For interest, I took a little clay and added it along the top lip to echo the folded edges of the opening. And here's the bone dry version of the one we just made. Now here's an alternate version where I made two cuts in the form and added just a tiny little handle in the back. Now here's the glazed version of that. The illusion is that it appears there are other forms growing inside of a bigger form. I love the lines of those pieces. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time in the studio.